Okay, today I'm going to just do something for a little bit of fun here and hopefully uh, educational. Uh, this is uh, what we call a contactor. It's really no different from a regular relay uh, that you <clears throat> apply a uh, voltage to the coil, like that's your signal, and the contacts will close, bridging these two points. And that's what a relay does. So what's the difference between this and a relay? Well, a contactor is generally something uh, that does a lot higher power than a relay. Plus, this particular contactor, and a lot of them actually, <clears throat> but luckily this one actually says on it, external economizer required. <clears throat> this is a, a common um, device used in electric vehicles. One of the more popular brands is a Tyco Electronics. It's the Kilovac the EV200A. You'd think that means it can do 200 amps, but it's actually uh, good for 500 amps according to the data sheet. Um, and uh, there you go. It has a Tesla part number on it. Uh, I believe these were in some kind of conversion project that Tesla did. It's not in the Model S or anything like that. They have a different version of this uh, in those cars. Uh, this is for like a defunct project that doesn't exist anymore that was parted out. And so I was able to pick this up pretty cheap, relatively. These are kind of expensive if you buy them new. Uh, and in my experiments, it welded. That means that during a, a time when the power was removed, as in to turn off the current that's flowing through it, um, the uh, contactor disengaged, but the arc from that um, uh, breaking the current caused the contacts to fuse. Uh, essentially welding them and that's it didn't turn off and that's actually a really bad failure mode you don't want to have that happen um, so this was welded it still technically works now because there's there's a, it's a spring that's pulling back the contacts you just give it a couple of good taps and the the weld which hopefully I'll be able to show you at some point uh, broke free and it still works but as far as the reliability goes this has been compromised I don't trust it anymore I wouldn't. Uh, I would use this for experiments, but nothing more than that. Uh, but uh, since I'm done with that, and uh, I think this would be fun to do, let's see if I can crack it open to see if we can see what that welding looks like, at least, and see if we can learn something else along the way. This is sealed up pretty good. I don't know how successful I'll be. I'll be using a um, high-speed cutting disc. This one's specifically meant for cutting plastic. It'll cut metal too, but you'll, it'll wear down faster. Uh, and also I'll just show you some of the principle behind this. What does that mean when it says external economizer required? Well, generally here, here's a, a 12 volt power supply and if I power it up, the, the contactor, it'll pull over, over 3 amps, right? And so the economizer is you only need that 3 amps for the few first milliseconds to actually uh, pull up the um, this, against the spring, but once it's holding there, that's what's called the hold current, uh, and that can be a lot less. The voltage for that becomes a lot less as well. And what I've done to simulate that on this power supply, I just lower the current, the limiting current to almost as low as I can get it. Uh, so I'll do that, and then it, the voltage will drop down to two and a half volts, 0 0.7 amps. So that's now holding, and I, I can measure across that; it'll be fine. And you can actually hear the click. There you go. Uh, so. Um, that that's that's what these are, are working as, and this is how they how they uh, work. Um, and if you didn't have that economizer, you'd probably would melt this because 3.7 amps is quite a bit of power to be going through that continuously. Because that's the idea is that when your device is on, it's uh, on for a long period of time, right? And so it's not like a signal relay where it's just going to click on and off every once in a while. This, this goes on and this can stay on for over an hour. And in the case of an, uh, a microgrid project, it's going to be on indefinitely. So you want to use as little power as possible. And what I did, I just got to see how that was 2.5 volts when it was running. I just got a 2.5 volt uh, uh, buck. Yeah, buck power supply from China uh, and hooked it up to the 12 volts. And what I did was the, the turn to turn on, I just push a button to, to circumvent that power supply so it gives it full 12 volts. And when I release the button, it just goes back to the 2.5 volts and it holds it there and it runs, it works totally fine uh, and pulls very little power. Okay, so without further ado, let's get hacking into this. I'm gonna go switch into time lapse mode uh, because I've no idea how long this will really take. I don't know how it will be successful. Wish me luck.
Okay, so uh, here we go with the time lapse. Uh, just a spoiler alert: I did, was able to succeed, and you'll, as you, I don't know if I get the thumbnail to show the uh, welded uh, bits or not. But anyways, uh, I used the, my cl plastic cutting disc, and it gummed up right away. And that's never happened before. I think it's just this type of plastic plus the epoxy uh, that's putting everything together. So I uh, had to go at it with that a couple times, and decided just to. Um, just pound the hell out of it with a hammer and a flat screwdriver as a chisel, uh, just to get this outer uh, layer of uh, plastic off. Like that, you can I can tell at the, the top there's like kind of a lid um, that holds the epoxy at the top, and then the rest of the body is like a cup. So I wanted to remove the cup from the body just to kind of see what's in there. I, I have no idea what to expect if this thing has a plastic housing or whatever, right? So. Uh, I ended up taking the hacksaw and um, getting it started that way. Maybe that's the next segment. But it doesn't matter uh, the sequence that much anyways. I got through to the bottom. There's some kind of metal plate there. It doesn't do much. I th it probably has something to do with uh, magnetic direction or redirecting the magnetic field from the coil. So this is this section here is just after I put the hacksaw on it just to um, improve uh, that cut a little bit deeper. And that way I can get the screwdriver in underneath that plastic and start chipping away at that. Uh, so there's that little nub, I'll mention that later. And a little copper piece sticking out from underneath that nub. Uh, but here is where I decided just to, I'm going to go all the way around the whole perimeter of that uh, the metal uh, body, uh, which is uh, what I discovered after removing that bottom plate. Uh, within that plastic cup, there's a metal cup. Uh, and that's what holds all the parts um, so it didn't, it's not actually wasn't that bad because, um, the epoxy kind of just chipped right off of it. But I did want to get the, the epoxy ridge all, all the way off because uh, I decided I want to try and cut that uh, metal cup in half. So, uh, here, let's, uh, what's going on next here? So, yeah, that's what I thought it would be. Okay, so I got, um, uh, my Dremel tool and I'm going to start cutting uh, away at this and, um, it didn't take me too long to realize that the plastic cutting tool still gummed up. I thought it was the metal would kind of scrape off the um, the dried plastic uh, off the edge of the cutting disc, and it didn't really work very well. So I switched over to my metal cutting disc, and it worked a lot better. Um, so yeah, um, once that cuts off, like the, it started separating on its own almost right away. So I knew this is this is going to go nicely. So that orange bed at the bottom, that's the coil. And what it does is it's a pushing coil. So there's a rod in the middle of that. When it gets, uh, it's like an electromagnet. Instead of pulling, it pushes. Well, I, I guess it's always a pull. Um, it'll pull, I guess, when you from this direction, it'll pull downwards, which will then push the plunger, as this is the terminology, for the contacts uh, to close. And there is a, um, a snap ring uh, holding on there. I don't know what the hell the purpose of that snap ring was. I, I removed the snap ring. And, uh, yeah, it didn't really do much. There you have it. Okay. That, uh, copper there, a little bit more prominent in there. You can see it looks like uh, an explosion kind of thing happened. Like this is a uh, silver plated copper, right? Silver is an excellent, um, conductor. And, um, even when it, uh, silver oxide is a much better conductor than copper oxide. So that's usually how contacts are usually made. Um, and yeah, you can see that's how it welded. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, and this is something I already knew, uh, is that this little stub right here pulls vacuum, or some some kind of gas is in this uh, area. It's probably just simply vacuum. Um, and so this coil pushes this little guy, and then these magnets, I believe, are uh, magnetic blowouts in that they help extinguish the, any kind of arc that occurs there by uh, kind of uh, the arc being uh, uh, kind of has some, having magnetic properties of its own will follow the the flux lines of the magnets, and so that's usually the, the long way around. And the longer the arc gets stretched, the sooner it'll it'll break and stop arcing. All this happens in a matter of microseconds. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's what the damage looks like. It's pretty severe, and no, certainly no regrets by scrapping this guy. I uh, would not want to trust this to be used in high current applications any further. It's 
pock marks all over this. Let's see if I can get uh, any shots under the microscope and I'll add them in at the end. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. Okay, we're finally here. It took a whole 10 minutes. Hopefully these uh, images show up well on your screen. I didn't bother doing very much editing or cropping. Um, yeah, definitely one side's worse than the other. And uh, yeah, this uh, is uh, pretty exciting to see this stuff. Anyways, yeah, thanks again, and see you next time. Bye.